rushed by in swirls as Sean and I strolled through the Jasper River Walk along the Potoka River. Sean said he had to go back to St. Louis soon, but first he wanted to go for a walk. I doubt it would get too far because he seemed distracted. He played with a zipper on his nylon jacket, pulling it up and down. We stopped at the wooded gazebo to gaze at the river flowing along the edge. Sean sat on a bench facing me. Uh, something on your mind? I asked him. You're acting weird. What's wrong? I've been thinking. He paused. It's time we stop dating. My stomach dropped. He was breaking up with me. What had gone wrong? Sean had decided he wanted someone who could walk, fix him dinner, and push a baby in the stroller. I was too much to take care of. That's what it was. The park spun. Relax, Kelly. Breathe. You'll get through this. You've been there before. How stupid I'd been for falling again. But after a year of being with Sean, I thought we were different. Weren't we the real thing? Had I been too buried in hope that I hadn't seen what was really happening? Sean was saying something. What? He stood and peeled off his jacket as if suddenly warm and stuffed it in the bag on the back of my chair, then returned to the bench in front of me. He wrapped his arms around my legs, furrowed his brows, and exhaled loudly. I think we need to talk about where our relationship is going. He held a small box in his hand. Where had that come from? A gust of wind carried strands of hair across my face, trapping a few in my mouth. He reached over, collected them, brushed them to the side, and gave me one of those stares that said this was the most difficult thing he had ever done. He was looking for me to reassure him that he was doing the right thing. I turned my head away. But he took hold of my chin. You know how I think things through over and over again? It's me. It's, it's what I do, Kelly. I've asked you hundreds of questions. I've analyzed your relationship forever. I've talked to your doctors. I know you really well, and you know me. We've been together long enough now that we need a change. A change? I've changed since I've met you, Kelly. I don't want to spend another day without you. I want us to grow old together. He knelt on one knee and opened the box to reveal a round diamond ring. Kelly Ann Craig, will you marry me? What? I was stunned. My stomach flipped. He wasn't leaving me. Sean nodded and smiled, but gazed at me intensely. Choosing my lifelong teammate is the most important decision of my life. But for me, he said, this decision is made with confidence. I got it right, Kelly. Your positivity is infectious. Your beauty is breathtaking. And your heart is as big as they come. Is this really happening? The diamond ring glistened from the tears pooling in my eyes. It's your time, Kelly. It's your turn. It's happening. I don't want us to be boyfriend and girlfriend anymore. I closed my eyes and tears fell. All my life I waited for this moment. The fairy tale proposal, the prince and the princess, and it was really happening. I loved him and I wanted a life with him. Somehow we would make it work. I dreamt of our life together for months. So yes, I will marry you. He slid the diamond on my slender finger, but the ring was too big. We laughed. I, I didn't want to ruin the surprise by getting your exact measurements, he confessed. I'll get it sized this week. Tears fell down my cheeks, tickling my chin. Put it on my pointer finger. He transferred the ring to my other finger. This will work for now. I held out my hand and admired the perfect round diamond, simple and sweet, a symbol of his love. He bent over and scooped me out of my chair and hugged me on his lap. He put his lips over mine, and I let my salty tears fall as we kissed.